Hello everyone, my name is Zulgar and this is Hugo's Desk. Today on You Just Have To Be Better, we're going to talk about the fill mat and how to use it using geometry to occlude certain layers. Maybe using 2D layers, maybe using 2D elements or even particles. In the situation I'm going to show you, we'll be using particles inside of Nuke. So let's just get cracking. Before we start, I would like to thank all my supporters and Patreon. You guys are really, really helping me uh, keep the channel afloat. And don't forget that if you support for $1 per month, you get access on a timed base exclusive. These episodes of You Just Have To Be Better. Thank you so much for your support. We will be using some assets from the latest cinematic that I did as a cinematic director for Fire Dot Smoke. This is the uh, launch trailer for E Valkyrie Warzone. You should really check it out. Uh, e Valkyrie Warzone comes out in September 26, and it's a really great expansion for the original E Valkyrie, especially because now you can play the game without relying on a PSVR headset. You can check out the launch trailer at the E Valkyrie YouTube channel, or you can of course check it at Fire Dot Smoke's website. This shot was uh, done using Maya, and then lighting and rendering and shading was done in Redshift on GPU Accelerated. Uh, then of course Comp was done in Nuke. So the main thing, as you can see when you look at this shot, is that there is a couple of particles flying, floating around the ship. Now. There's a couple of ways, of course, of doing this. You could have done a particle system and then we could have rendered particles on the foreground, we could have rendered particles in the background, and then rendered foreground particles on the midground. But one of the things that I've used using geometry inside of Nuke is that I use a material called the fill mat. I don't know you guys if you know, but the fill mat is literally a material that applies a black shader into any geometry inside of Nuke. Once you get the fill mat uh, in, then basically you're occluding any other geometry that is inside of it. So for example, um, if you would want, you could use the fill mat to, for example, put some dust particles or some sparks, and that element could have been behind this cockpit bit for example and we could use the geometry to mask almost like a deep composting method uh, that was actually the uh, process that we used uh, to put the flares and the smoke and all the elements that actually are coming in inside this myth missile tray so all the smoke that comes out of it and the flare is actually being cut by the actual geometry but we will look into that when i actually do a disconstruction of this shot in the next few weeks so for this to, to happen, I'm going to show you really basically. So this is the geometry we have. So And the way that this works is that we are literally applying a material to the actual geometry. So the thing that we do is we apply in a material, and then the material that we're going to use is called fill mat. Now, the fill mat material is nothing more than a material that that transforms the entire geometry to black. So as soon as I plug it in, you see that the actual uh, geometry becomes fully black. So of course, for you to do this methodology that I'm doing here, you will need a camera, you will need the geometry from the scene, and of course, you'll need a render. So I'm gonna plug it in the camera. This is the animated camera coming from Maya, and I'm gonna plug it in uh, into the geometry. I'm gonna put a scene because we're gonna have other pieces of geometry going on here. So now if I look through the camera's perspective, you basically get this. You get the exactly same uh, image. Now, of course, this piece of geometry is not just an OBJ, it's, a, it's an Alembic uh, cached file. So as you can see, the missile is also moving. I always recommend using Alembic because then you can bring in, you can bake in the entire animation into Nuke. But let me just show you what happens if I put a checkered board, for example. I'm going to just put a checkered board here using a card, a 3D card, and I'm going to go into my geometry and plug it into this thing. So now, if I put my card, it needs to be a bit bigger because, because of course, the geometry is quite large. The scale is quite big, so I have to kind of make it a bit bigger. Just to represent what I'm talking about, this is a card, and as you can see, the card is now mangled, merged in between the other geometry. So because I'm using a fill mat, this is what's going to happen. If I go into my scanline render and look at it through the scanline render, you can see that I have an alpha channel, which is from the card, but the alpha channel is actually cut by the actual geometry. And so this is really handy, if, for example, if you want to put some particles behind certain things. So I'll give you an example. Let me bring in some, some kind of like 2D element. So here's, for example, just to give an example, a piece of rain. 
so imagine this is a plate. This is a 2D plate uh, from FX uh, elements, and it's basically a piece of uh, dribbles, you know, like a bunch of rain particles. If I would have plugged this in into the card in that area, you can see that now the card is merged with the geometry. So now if I look at the output in 2D on the scanline render, you can kind of see that the drizzle is now actually merged in between the geometry. So now let me show you what, what you could do with this. Like imagine that you want to have a little piece of, piece of, of, of particles, for example. If I put a crop node here, maybe I put 100 there. I'm just going to put like a big, big vignetting around it. I'm just going to make 500 maybe. Uh, and then I go into the scene and I'm just going to put my cards much smaller and I'm going to actually put it just in front of the CG but behind the cockpit. Let's for example try that just to see how it would work. So now if I look at through the camera's perspective you can clearly see that I have a piece of elements which is behind the cockpit but actually in front of the rest of the geometry. So now if I look at the 2D version of this you clearly have a piece of element that is actually behind. So this means that you don't necessarily need to do rotoscoping or using object IDs uh, to actually mask if you have a piece of geometry that's very complex, if you have foreground objects and background objects, you can actually put in 3D cards in between the geometry. This is really handy to put like, you know, smoke particles, to put a shot, like uh, sparks of missiles, to put uh, smoke uh, elements like you saw on the missile being launched there. Uh, it's really helpful to do all those little effects. And actually, I, I do this quite effectively on most of my cinematics. And so now you can see that you can kind of get away with really easily with this. This is just basically a, a bunch of rain and you can clearly see it's being masked just by the front of the cockpit. One of the things that you do have to realize is that the edges of this geometry are quite rough, as you can see. And this is nothing more to do with the fact that the scanline render uh, default from Nuke doesn't really utilize anything. So you always have to make sure you open up your scanline render and in the scanline render options, I'm gonna just zoom in so you can kind of see it here, you have the utilization options here. So if you go into the utilization options here, you can clearly just go in here and say, okay, I want high utilization. If I put high utilization, you can clearly see that the edges now or as they should, you get really high quality edges from the geometry. If you're not happy with this and if you actually want to even include actual motion blur with this, then you can even go to the multi-sampling tab and actually sample this. Let's say, for example, we put a samples of 10, then the quality of the edge improves even more, but also not only it improves in terms of the edges, but also it creates motion blur when uh, the movement is too big. So, and then of course you can match the motion blur with the shutter of 0.5 or whatever shutter you've used in the 3D package. Just to show you, just to show you how this would look, if I would have merged now the particle like this, this elements that I've just made as an A input and the B input would be to my geometry, you can now clearly see that I have successfully comped a piece of rain. The only thing I do have to do, of course, is this rain doesn't have any alpha channel whatsoever. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to actually put, uh, it has an alpha channel, but it's solid. So I'm just going to use the red channel as my alpha uh, so that that way when it goes to the 3D system it becomes me transparent that's what I want and so when I move it out now it's actually being masked but now when I merge it against it you can clearly see the rain is now there so of course this is a bit silly because of course there's no rain in space uh, but you get the picture we actually did this technique to put the smoke of the trail of the missile uh, in the actual missile that is being launched on this ship. So basically using this technique, we've put the 2D card of the smoke actually inside the box of the geometry. And then using the, the fill mat, we can actually cut it. And there you go. As you can see now here, we have successfully placed some rain in between the cockpit and the geometry. And now let's just imagine that we could have put it on this side as well. And we could even actually put some drops of water like drizzle in the actual cockpit we could have easily used the UVs of the actual geometry to just put some drops coming down. Maybe I'll show you this on the next time on another video. So now that we've seen it with an element, let's, for example, think about it if we would have used the particle system. So let's just really quickly make a particle system here. So this is a, a, an actual moon crater a texture from NASA that you can just get from free. I'm going to plug this in into a sphere. Uh, so once I have that, I should have what looks like a moon. So this is a little moon that we have here. So as you can see, it looks like our moon. 
uh, which is exactly what we wanted. First thing I'm going to do, because this is going to be plugged into a particle system, I am going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to just make 0,1 so that we have a smaller particle. Uh, we're going to try to do some asteroids. And then from there, I'm going to use an uh, emitter. So I'm going to use an emitter uh, start thinking about the cage where this particle is going to happen. So I'm going to put a, cu a cube um, of where the actual geometry of the particles. I'm going to put a transform geo as well. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to actually put it into the part to the emitter so that I know that that's the emitter, the bounding box that I'm going to use. I'm going to put the particle coming from the sphere inside my emitter. I need to make sure that I tell them, OK, I want to start at let's say 1000 since, uh, well, let's say 900 since our, our comp starts at 1020 that I want emit not from points, but I want to emit from the bounding box that I've created. And I'm going to say random uh, direction from them. And then I'm going to make my emission rate of one. I should be seeing the particles inside that box. And then I'm going to say my lifespan is 200 just so they can last a bit longer. Um, Let's say, for example, my emission rate will be 10, 10 particles. So that's these are my little moons that I've put on the particle system. Plug it into the scene, into the emitter so that I can actually see where the ship is. As I was already uh, <laughs> dreading, the cube is way too small. So I'm going to actually go into the cube's transform geo. Just going to make the cube bigger, the cube of emission of particles. And if I look at my emission, the particles are now roughly 2,000. And now they're all around the ship as well. And so now if I go and get my camera as well, let's just look through the camera's perspective to see what we have here. So basically, I have a camera set like that. Now I'm going to put a fill mat on the on the actual um, on the actual ship. We can either plug in the fill mat into the image input of the uh, geometry, or we can do like we did on the other example, which is the apply material. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my cube to be a bit uh, more in the front of the image, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, so it actually covers the entire ship. And then on my emitter. I'm actually going to go ahead and actually put an emit rate of 10 so that we have more particles. I think actually maybe I'll even do 20 because we have two little particles going on. And I'm going to make the size maybe of two so that the particles are a bit bigger and so that we can actually see them. So if I look through the camera's perspective now, hopefully we start seeing some particles going around the ship. It's not many. I think I've place too little. So I'm going to still put in the emission rate of 50. I'm actually going to put a lifetime of 300 so that they stay. I'm also going to make the size a bit bigger just so I can see them for the moment. There you go. Now we see them. Um, and now the thing that will happen is that now you can see that we have particles in front and on the back. Now, because I'm using the fill mat, of course, the particles that are supposed to be in the back will stay in the back and the ones will be on the front will be in the front. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not the collision of an emitter. So I'm not actually using the geometry to avoid the particles. I'm not doing that. I'm just masking them. You know, that's a that's a different thing that we would have to do with another particle system. But uh, that's not the intuitive of this tutorial. I'm just going to show I'm just trying to show you the various uses of using the fill mat. So I'm just going to plug this in here. And let's just have a look at the result. Things start to become a bit slower because you're handling with particles. And so now you can clearly see I'm just going to gamma up this thing so you can kind of see it a bit better. Um, I'm going to make the particles bigger because um, otherwise you guys don't see what I mean. There you go, a bit bigger. So now, for example, if I remove the geometry in the fill mat from my actual scene, you'll see what happens. So you see, the ship is around here in the middle. So, of course, if I enable the fill mat, the ship like covers the particles that are behind. But the ones that are in front, as you can see here, they stay in front. So that's really hand. This is a really handy way to actually mask particles or to the elements using geometry. Now, I'm going to just show you really quickly how it looks at the end of this entire thing. So 
um, when we did the actual thing. So this this was the particle system that we created using this exact technique. So as you can see, the particle system is completely occluded. So the particles on the front only show up in the front, and some of them are occluded by the by the actual cockpit, and some of them go behind the ship. So the ship is among here in the middle. Now the other thing as well that we did was that we've uh, actually used the displaced geo. We've actually used the displaced geo to make the actual asteroids look a bit more rough. And so I'm just going to show you really quickly how that was set up. So this was the original setup that we had uh, in the particle system. I'm just going to switch this on and kind of show you step by step. So we, we start with having, of course, the map. We then shuffle to white. Then we put a fong material and actually place it on the actual geometry as a, as a sphere. Then we make several types of spheres. So I start by using one sphere and then I displace it using an actual noise pattern. So this noise pattern is just displacing using the displaced geo to making a random asteroid. Nothing more than a noise pattern like that. And that's plugged in into the displaced geo. Maybe someday I can show you exactly how the displaced geo works and the displacement geo works because we haven't really talked about that yet. So now I'm doing several uh, of them because I don't want all the particles to look the same. And so then I have another one there. So this is a completely different asteroid that I've created using a yet another noise pattern. Pattern. Then I have yet another uh, asteroid like that. So this is yet another complete different noise pattern. And then we have yet another noise pattern making that asteroid. So as you can see, they all look different. So we have this asteroid, that asteroid, and that asteroid, and that asteroid. So we have this one, this one, this one, and this one. And so once you have a bunch of asteroids like that, then you can start using the emitters. You get a random field of asteroids, particle systems, and of course they are all randomized between the different asteroids that we created, which is really cool because then it looks a bit different. Then I put a frame hold. The reason I put a frame hold is because I don't want, in this specific shot, the particles weren't moving. The particles are supposed to be frozen in time because this is supposed to be a frozen in time shot. And then, just like I did with the other shot, I have the camera, I have the fill mat with the actual geometry of the ship. So as you can see here, from the ship's perspective, there's a fill mat attached to it. There's also a light. Uh, the reason I have a light is because I wanted to match the lighting direction of the ship with the particles. So I placed the light for the particles. And so if we look at it through the scene, and there you go. Now we have a particle system with all the geometry. And then, of course, we have the camera. Now, I would advise you really, really a lot to actually render this because... When you have the displacement and the lighting and the shading and the initialization, it's really slow. So what I did was I pre-rendered this sequence, but I pre-rendered the EXR with all the depth, the motion vectors, the normals and the position pass, so that when I get the EXR into my comp, if I still want to do depth of field, if I still want to do some extra relighting, I still have access to it without having to open the 3D system like this. And so as you can see, this is the rendered result. Now, uh, like I said, we have the depth pass, we have the motion vectors. Of course, the motion vectors bring in the ki the the, sh the ship as well. So this is one of the downfalls of using the the actual fill mat. The fill mat will not delete the geometry that was there in terms of passes, um, and and that's it really. And so that's really the little trick here that I wanted to show you. A lot of people don't really use the fill mat a lot, and I, I use it on every project I do. So every time I have access to the geometry, I just bring in the geometry and use the fill mat to do these kind of things, to use particles, elements. As you guys know already, I use 2D elements all the time. So I hope you've enjoyed this little trick, this little video. Uh, as always, you know, as always, support me on Patreon. Um, you know that if you pay $1 a month, you'll get access to this uh, series of tutorials from You Just Have To Be Better. Uh, I hope you agree that $1 is not a lot of money to actually have this kind of uh, quality level of tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, um, leave some comments. I would love to know your feedback. I would love to know what you guys thought of this tutorial. And of course, keep me some comments if you have any suggestions for new tutorials, uh, especially if you have anything in mind that you would like me to cover please go ahead. Or if you have a question about some of the shots of my projects, please go ahead and I will try to do either this a disconstruct or I will try to do a small tutorial explaining it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys around.